Okay, section 2.5, transformations of functions. All right, so this is an interesting section. Okay, it basically talks about how you can have a graph of one function, and then you can um, perform a series of transformations to make it look uh, like something else, right? Maybe something like this. Okay, so you can start with a Start with a function, a graph of a function, and then you can transform it by shifting it. That's called a translation. Um, or you can reflect it, flip it upside down or across the y-axis or x-axis. Uh, and you can stretch it or compress it. Okay, so there's all these things that you can do by manipulating the formula. Okay, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's get this out the way. Um, and let's kind of start just talking about the different transformations. I'll do some examples and then we'll get to the, the actual examples in the end. Okay, so first let's talk about um, translations. Also called shifts. Okay, shifts. Okay, so um, by translation, we can do a vertical translation. And this just amounts to adding or subtracting something from the actual function itself. Okay, so um, let's see how I want to write this out. If you start off with y equals f of x, okay, that's the notation I'm going to use to represent you have a graph, okay, that you're going to want to change in some way. Uh, if I want to change that by translating it up or down, I add or subtract a number to the end. Okay, so I start with this, then y equals the original plus b is the same graph or has the same graph. As the original, but it is shifted up b units. So whatever that number happens to be. All right, so for example, let's say I had a graph that looked something like this, and I wanted to move it up three spaces. This could be y equals x squared, then y equals x squared plus, I think I said three, would look like this. All right, so I changed it, I transformed it by moving it up three, by just adding three. Okay, this is also the case if I try to subtract. So y equals f of x minus b has the same graph, blah, 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 but shifted down, up versus down, b units. Okay, so I don't think that's a hard concept to grasp. You add something to the end of it, it moves it up. You subtract something from the end of it, it moves it down. Okay, so those would be vertical translations. Okay, again, I promise we were gonna do all the rules first before we get to some real examples. So let's go on to the next one, which is a horizontal translation. This one's a little trickier. Okay, horizontal translation. In other words, I have something that looks like this and I wanna move it to the right. Ugh, these graphs are not very good, but I think you get the point, right? I moved it to the right. So it started there with the vertex, now it's here. Okay, um, this is accomplished in a, oops, in a similar way to the uh, vertical translations, except this time y equals f of x minus b. Ah, notice where I put that minus b, right? It's inside of the parentheses. Compare that to a vertical translation, right? plus or minus can go on the outside. In this case, it goes on the inside. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. But this right here will shift the graph, a graph, right, B units. Okay, notice minus B shifting it right. That's kind of opposite in our brain. So just kind of keep that in mind. If it's a minus sign, you're moving it to the right. Okay, yeah, if you had x plus b, 
that's going to be shifting it to the left B units. Okay, so that one seems to work backwards. Okay, so what, do I, what does this look like? So let's go back to our example of y equals x squared. All right, looks something like that. And put the vertex just makes it easier to see what's going on. If we graphed y equals x minus 2 squared in the parentheses, that's going to move it 1, 2 spaces over to the right. Okay, compare that to y equals x squared plus 2, which would actually just move it up to, right? So those are the big differences there. If it's inside the parentheses with x, then it's going to happen horizontally, right? Think about x is the variable that represents horizontal, um, you know, is the horizontal variable. So if you add something or subtract something to the x specifically, it'll move the graph horizontally. Whereas if you do something outside of that, think about it affecting the y. All right. So that's translations. Let's talk about reflections. These are pretty simple to remember. We have two types. There is a, um, what we do it first, we're going to do vertical reflection. And that's just a reflection across the x axis. In other words, you had this, now you have this, right? Where you just, you just flipped it over, right? That's a vertical reflection. Okay, it could be more complicated than that. It can look like, if you have a graph that does something like this, well, all the points that were down here would now be up here. And all the points that were up here are now down there, right? So that's the same thing, it flips it over. Okay, anyway, so how do you do that? Well, I'm not gonna write all the words again, right? But if you want a vertical reflection, you multiply the function by a negative. Okay, so let's compare that from earlier. Y equals X squared. Y equals negative X squared would be this graph here. Okay, let's pretend like those are touching. There we go. All right, so um, yeah, you just put a negative on the outside. You multiply it by a negative. Okay, let's say you had something more complicated. Let's say you had y equals x squared plus one. Okay. That graph is x squared, except moved up a space. So here, y equals, multiply the whole thing by negative one. Well, that's gonna be down here, All right? Took this point, flipped it down to the bottom and went down. Okay, so that's a vertical reflection. What about a horizontal reflection? Remember, horizontal, it changes the x value. So again, this is the cross across the y axis this time. Okay, y equals, yep, put a negative inside with x. That'll change it there. It'll reflect it across the y axis. Now, our example of y equals x squared is not a good one in this case because it's symmetric with respect to the y axis. So if I change x to a negative x, negative squared will make it a positive. I actually end up with the exact same formula, it turns out. If I were to flip this around, right, if I took this side here and moved it there, and I took this side here and moved it there, I get the same graph, right? So y equals x squared is not a good example, but maybe we try something else. Let's try y equals x squared. Um, no, let's do, let's just do x plus one. Okay, that graph has a y-intercept of one, so it looks like that. y equals negative x plus one, right? Notice it didn't affect the whole thing, right? It didn't multiply the whole thing by negative one, just the x, right? Just the x. That graph is gonna have the y-intercept of one as well, but it's going to be slanted downward. Ooh, that was bad. That's a little bit better. Okay, so, um, and you can kind of see it, right? 
reflected across the y-axis. This part that was right here is now right here. And the part that was going this way on the other side of the y-axis is now over there, right? It's been reflected. So you kind of can see it, right? You can even notice, maybe you notice this little uh, region right here is now right there, right? Even that reflected. Okay, so that would be a horizontal reflection. You just change the x. All right, now let's talk about the last one we'll talk about today, which is a, uh, we're only going to do vertical, but vertical stretch or stretching and shrinking. I typically use, use the word compress, um, which is kind of what I've always said, compression. Uh, but the idea is that you have a graph, again, here's y equals x squared. And then you do something to kind of flatten it a little bit. Okay, it's not that the graph, the graph will continue to go up, right? So it's going to look kind of strange. But if you look, you know, let's say this was, I don't know, negative one and eight, and this was one and eight. Right? Well, now you're going to be at negative one and say, four one and four, right? It, it shrunk the values. And um, that would be a, a, sh a shrinking. A stretching would be negative one, one, you know, you're here 16, right? Something like that. All right, anyway, I can't draw, but I think you get the idea, right? So that would be a stretching and a shrinking compression. All right, so how do you do those things, right? So you multiply the function by a number. Now, if that number, I'm gonna say the absolute value of that number, because if you multiply by a negative, you're just flipping it over and stretching it or shrinking it. If that number is bigger than one, right? So two, 10, right? It's a bigger number, then you are stretching the graph. Okay, you multiply by a big number, you stretch it. If you multiply by a number that is between zero and one. In other words, something like a half, right? Or one third. You're, you're, you're gonna be shrinking it, right? Compressing it by that factor. So, you know, if you multiply it by a half, then you'd have half the y values as before. Okay, so anyway, that that's, that's that. Um, so y equals x squared. This is exactly the example I had a second ago, or similar to it. Um, so let's put some, some numbers, negative one, one, when you square negative one, you get one. When you square one, you get one. Cool. Y equals 10 X squared. Negative one and one. Um, so negative one squared is one times 10 would be 10. So I'm gonna put that way up there. We'll just pretend like that's 10. And that would also be 10. So the graph doesn't actually look much different, but notice the scale, right? It's not, it's not the same, right? It's really a lot taller. I should really make it go way up here, right? But we're not gonna do that. All right, um, and then y equals, let's say 0.1 x squared or 1 tenth x squared. Okay, well at negative one, one, it's gonna be just down there. So it's gonna be really, there we go. Yeah, whatever. All right, let's do some examples. Example number one. Okay, so in this case, uh, or for the first couple of examples, I want to know, um, I want to describe something, right? I want to describe this graph using a basic graph. Okay, well, how do I do that? Well, okay, first of all, I see a negative on the outside, I see a minus three inside with x, I see a plus five on the end. I know what those th three things are, okay? So, first of all, x is being squared, right? Do I see that there? x squared. So, this function will have the same graph of y equals x squared, 
except, or I'll just say but, this minus three means that it's moved to the right, three. The plus five means it's up five. And the negative on the multiplied means it's reflected across the x-axis. Okay, example two. Okay, well, what's happening on this one? Okay, again, I see x squared, so the graph of y equals x squared, but it's plus four, so left four, minus three on the end, so it's gonna be down three, and then multiplied times three on the outside means it's gonna be stretched by a factor of three. All right. All right, so a couple more examples. This time it says write an equation for our function. Okay, so we're gonna make our own function now that has the graph of y equals x cubed, but it's upside down think reflected across the X. X axis, um, upside down and shifted right five units. All right, so my new function, reflected means negative in front of it and then right five, oh well, if it's moving to the right, it's a horizontal movement, so I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put that minus five inside with x. There's my graph. Okay, example four, two more examples. All right, one set, have the same graph as y equals x squared, but shift it right six and up two, right six up two. Okay, so x squared, so x squared, right six means minus six inside with the x. Up two means plus two on the end. See, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward at this point. All right, and last one. Write an equation for a function has a graph with the shape of y equals one over x, aha. But reflected across the x. X axis and shift it up one unit. Okay, reflected across the x-axis means a negative in the front. Shifted up one means plus one on the end. All right, and that is transformation of functions.